Hey everybody, it's that time. It is 6 p.m. on Wednesday. This is the follow-up video to last week's video, which was um, all about how do I know if I need a cleanse. So if you haven't checked that out already, go ahead and do that first because it's going to be really insightful and it really takes you through the process. And this is now the next step, which is basically all about cleansing. This is perfect for someone who may have never done a cleanse before or has had a bad experience with cleansing in the past or um, just doesn't really understand, hey, I see you there, thanks for joining, who doesn't really understand some of the basic things about cleansing. So consider this a little cleansing 101 class. Last week we talked about how to validate if you need a cleanse and this time we're going to talk about all of the nitty gritty. So I'm going to pull up my notes now and get this going. Oh, bear with me. <laughs> it is always so nerve wracking to go live, but um, I have all faith that this is going to work out just fine. <laughs> oh, how's everybody doing tonight? Good? All right, I got it. Nice, hello, welcome. Okay, well, let me go ahead and get started on this. Some of you might be not able to participate live and you'll get to watch this replay. First, let me go ahead and introduce myself because I know that I have new people joining in here that are not familiar with me and my work and who, who and what I am. So my name is Lori Painter. I will say first and foremost that I am not a doctor. I am not diagnosing. I am not giving medical advice. I'm not treating or prescribing or anything like that. I am merely giving you information that you can use to empower yourself to make wise decisions for yourself. Last week I talked a little bit about some self-assessments. This week we'll talk about more. Hey, <laughs> okay. So with that said, um, I'm a holistic health practitioner. I have been doing I have been cleansing myself since 2002. That was such a big aha experience for me. I didn't even know really what I was getting into. I was just recommended by um, an herbologist to do a cleanse. And that experience left such an impact on me that it's something that I have continued to do over the course of the past 16 years. And now, I have learned pretty much all of the, oh, and by the way, because we're live video, you might see people coming and going and, and the kitty cats meowing. So that's just the nature of this beast. So hang in there with me. Um, okay, so what I was saying is I've pretty much learned all of the different things about cleansings. A, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of ineffective cleanses, things that really waste your time or set you up to almost like, I wouldn't say sabotage, but get off track and maybe even set yourself back. So I wanna go over some of that stuff. So we're gonna start with the first thing. If you saw the, the message of what we're gonna be discussing tonight, first thing is we're gonna talk about great times to cleanse. and when you would want to cleanse. And here's the thing, is that your body is naturally a self-cleaning machine. But there are just particular elements and habits that we have that get in the way of us being self-cleaning machines. So this is the process. Cleansing is the process of removing the things that are inhibiting us from cleansing or for our body's cleansing so that the body can do what it's meant to do. And something that was really insightful for me is that they, that is was said is taught to me is the body is either resting or digesting. It's not doing both at the same time. And if the body is constantly digesting, then the body is not able to go in rest mode. And in rest mode is when the body goes into its self-cleaning mode. So that is something just to keep in mind that we're not, we're basically just eliminating the roadblocks that get in the way rather than cleansing because your body just does what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to cleanse. We just inhibit it. Okay, so great times to cleanse. I made this really simple because I think of it this way is 
just like we have scheduled maintenance records that we have for our vehicles, like every three months you should get an oil change and rotate your tires and, you know, every so many miles you need to get a radiator flush or transmission flush or whatever. There's all these different suggested maintenance uh, schedules for the proper care and maintenance of your vehicle. Well, your body is the most dynamic vehicle that is with you from birth to death, so you might as well learn how to take care of it and keep it in tip-top shape. So the first great time to cleanse, you can actually cleanse from sundown to sunup. That's on a daily basis. And that just means that you're abstaining from food. It's amazing how, and you're getting good rest. That's like a light level cleanse that you could do every day. When you literally breakfast, breaking the fast, that is the most common everyday cleanse that we do. However, sometimes we can inhibit that by eating really heavy meals just before bed or eating really late at night. And by the time we get up in the morning, we either don't want to eat breakfast because we haven't fully digested our meals and then we start going on. So the body, if you go to bed on a heavy stomach, and remember, like I said, resting, uh, di cleansing happens when the body is resting, it's going to be digesting instead of resting, so therefore it's not gonna be cleansing. So being intentional from sundown to sun up is a really great way. Sometimes I'll think of it as a minimum of 12 hours, okay? And other times, there's even a, a more specific philosophy to cleansing, and this is to not take in any solid food in the morning until you have had your first bowel movement. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, for so many people, that may not happen all day. It just depends, right? Everybody is different. But there will be some people who are not having regular daily bowel movements, so that would be really interesting if that was the philosophy that was incorporated. But that is a really impactful one because it keeps you connected to your digestion and your elimination cycle, which has everything to do with your cleansing. Um, so moving on, another great time to practice a cleanse is just a 24-hour cleanse once a week. This used to be a practice of mine that I did for, I don't know how long, and whenever I get off track, I'll take a day to set the body back in balance. And what I love about cleansing is that cravings start to diminish. You know, I notice that there's a difference between hunger and cravings, and I notice when I'm getting off track. When I no longer have the interest in eating healthy, clean food, then I know that I'm operating on off of cravings. When healthy fruits and vegetables are in front of me and I'm like, no, I, I'm really not that hungry. I'm not in the mood for that. I'd rather eat this. I know that I'm operating not out of hunger. I'm operating out of cravings. So one of the beautiful things about um, cleansing is that it resets that. It detaches and gives you a little break from those cravings. And I'm going to talk more about where cravings can come from parasites, candida, things like that. So we'll go into that a little bit further later on in this on this call or on this video um, so that you can really understand that because it's so funny once you start to understand the things that are throwing your body off, it's really you start to wonder, am I operating this body or all of the bacteria and parasites and all the other little critters living within me um, running my body? Because they will literally send out cravings. So Back to my point, one, one day a week, if you could do a 24-hour reset where, and I love this time, if you're going to be fasting or, or um, and I'm going to go into all the different types of cleansing. Hi, I see you there. Um, if you're going to be doing a 24-hour reset, you can do it as a fast or, you know, uh, eliminating particular elements from your diet or doing other things that I will be sharing with you more. But when you do that for 24 hours, I find, especially if you're doing a water fast, something like that, that somehow from 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. the next day seems to be the easiest time. So I'm hooking you up on a little nugget right there. And the reason being that if I ate breakfast and lunch and then I skipped on dinner, I might be a little bit hungry when I'm going to bed, but the hardest part about 
cleansing is can especially if you're water fasting um, which is one of the most difficult cleanses to do um, and some people find it really easy but in my opinion I find it to be um, one of the most difficult ones to do so but you're asleep during the time that the cravings or the hunger kicks in and then by the time you get up in the morning your stomach has already had a chance to start to shrink a little bit that when you wake up you're not feeling like roaring hunger so it's kind of a nice way if you're cleansing if you're doing a 24-hour cleanse that you give it from 3 p.m. in a 24-hour period and um, but it's just such a very tuning in experience when you cleanse you're gonna notice that all the rumblies in the gut start to start to settle down and I really have this analogy and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last video but I genuinely feel that if the gut is upset that affects your mood and you feel agitated and upset and then you go about your day with this undertone of irritation and it just gives us a little bit shorter fuse and doing a one day 24 hour reset calms that down and then kind of like a, an inner peace shows up and then a better version of yourself moves forward because think of it as this it's not like a strong irritation but if I was to sit here and lightly scratch my shoulder it doesn't bother me right now but if this goes on for a longer period of time eventually it's going to irritate my skin and that's kind of the light level irritation that can happen when you have digestive upset so cleansing is amazing I would say the number one reason somebody would really want to cleanse aside from their toxicity being really high which usually comes because of digestive upset and wanting to lose weight which again usually comes from digestive not having the digestive system on point that peace that you feel so that is something that I find to be extremely impactful it's a great one day a week practice that you can do to reset your appetite and cravings kind of put those into check um, another great time to cleanse is monthly and ideally it's at the moon cycle so the new moon cycle uh, and you can look this up on the internet just you know like for example whatever month we're in you're gonna type in that month and look up the new moon for that and that's a great time to be energetically connected to the magnetic fields of the planet and the way that it all goes in flow and I know for some of you that may sound a little airy fairy and the reason that I share this is it's actually not that airy fairy if the moon can affect high tide low tide and the tides of the ocean then and the ocean is far more massive than us how is it that we might feel that we aren't even possibly affected by that we're affected by so many other things so a great time to cleanse is monthly and you would do it for about four days at around the new moon or yeah right around that time it's a fantastic time and actually something that if you're a female and you are still having your monthly cycle this is also a great time to do it so usually the moon cycle and your monthly cycle syncs up together and when that happens that's even more in sync but if you spend four days doing that and actually it's Native Americans do this where what their tradition was is, and they found this for like PMS and, and their again their emotional upset that they would take four days before their cycle began and they would go and leave their home in like a little retreat uh, a little hut with other women that were having their cycles and they would fast they would cleanse and what they found is that was just a, a, a ritual that they would do monthly to keep themselves in sync and grounded and probably not to um, agitate the household because what's interesting again like I was talking before PMS and actually cleansing 
are um, very effective together. It really is fantastic. It's a practice that I intentionally do. I mark it on my calendar um, when, four days before my cycle is coming up. And it's actually really interesting is, I don't know if it's because I've done it so many times that I notice now that my body is, I feel the prompting to want to cleanse. I feel like, hmm, I need to do a little reset. So that's another great time to cleanse. Um, and then another fantastic time to cleanse is seasonally. And see, what I have, and you may have noticed this, when I said daily, it was like 12 hours. When I said weekly, it's like 24 hours. When I'm saying monthly, I'm saying about four days, three to four days. Um, so each time, the time is getting a little bit longer. And so seasonally, which great times to remember this, and again, also in alignment with the energy of nature, is at the summer and winter um, solstices and at the spring and fall equinox. So between those times, those are four times in the year that are great opportunities to cleanse. And that's every three months. And remember how I was sharing with you that um, your car has a scheduled maintenance? Think of it this way. You're supposed to get an oil change on your vehicle depending now Listen, because cars and oil is more sophisticated, but what it used to be is every three months or every 3,000 miles. That was kind of the general guideline. And what's interesting is that oil, when in your car, I find this so fascinating, so let me just geek out for a second, is when we do an oil change on the car, that is, you know, processing a fat, if you will. And it's fantastic every three months or so to do a liver and colon cleanse. And the reason I say liver is your liver is what processes and breaks down fat. If you start noticing that a couple of pounds are starting to creep in, if you do every three months a liver cleanse, along always along with a colon cleanse, never without, that is a big no-no and I'll talk to you more about that in a minute, but if you were to do a liver cleanse every three months, your body is going to be able to metabolize fat in the a, in a most optimal way because the only reason that people are holding on to excess fat is that the liver is so overburdened that it can't break it down. We, start produ we stop producing enough bile to break down the fat. So when you do a liver cleanse, it's kind of like an oil change for your body and you can start processing and metabolizing those fats a lot better. So that is something that I find really fascinating in correlating with automobile service and also um, your own body service. Um, and this is also a fantastic time seasonally. If you do this, you know, like I'm talking about a liver and colon cleanse seasonally, um, also a great and fantastic time to intentionally change your diet to one that goes with the seasons. It's so easy to get out of touch and out of tune, but the reason that getting back in touch with it is you're never gonna find, first of all, cheaper produce than what's in season. It's never gonna be fresher or tasting better, more nutrient rich than what's in season. So it's like a win, 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 win all the way around and it's a fantastic time. So even your cleansing can be different from spring, summer, fall, and winter and the produce that you're consuming while you're cleansing, depending on what level of a cleanse you're doing, and we'll talk about that more in a bit, but it can change with each season and it really tunes you in. So that is another fantastic time to cleanse. And now I'm gonna talk about at least once, once a year, if not twice a year, it is phenomenal to do a total body cleanse where you are just fine tuning and detailing from the inside out and the outside in every aspect of your body. You would look at all of your organs, obviously starting with the digestive tract. So that way you just take everything through the whole body. And that is what I'm even doing right now with this cleanse. And what I'm inviting you to participate in is to participate in a full body cleanse. And now not everybody comes in with the same strengths, weaknesses, ailments. We all have our own unique mechanical problems. Kind of like 
how vehicles, certain gear makes and models of cars tend to have particular issues with them. We're not that different. Certain body chemistries and compositions tend to have its own unique set of strengths and weaknesses and predispositions. Nobody is um, immune to that, and it doesn't matter how healthy you are. You can do things to prevent and to be restorative, but there's always going to be some prone weak links. And cleansing is just a way of making that less of a gap of a tendency for things to happen. Um, so we're, we all have something, including myself. I've been doing this for a lot t long time. I am not immune to, to the weaknesses that this body came into being with, but I can do whatever I can to make it as strong and integral as possible. And that's what cleansing is next to fine tuning every organ. So moving on, we're going to talk about the different types of cleanses that you can do. And I started to talk about it a little bit when I was talking about great time. So water fasting, I would say that is the most, and now there is dry fasting, but I didn't really put that in there. That's where you're not drinking or eating anything. It's not something I personally do, um, but that is a philosophy out there, and I'm sure that it has a time and a place for a particular person at the right time and the right place. Um, none of these are good, bad, or right, or wrong. It's just the combination and the ability to make good judgment calls for yourself. So it's more about being informed. Um, so I just start with the water fast. And I remember hearing in my training that that was something that was not recommended. Although my when I was growing up religiously, fasting was a part of our or religious practice that we would do once a month for 24 hours. Um, and we did water fast. And I remember even as a small child feeling just that I felt more in tune within. Um, but when I went to school for this and I went on, even we had continued education, the philosophy was is that water fasting wasn't appropriate for everybody because some people are coming in with nutritional deficiencies, and that makes them a little bit more prone or weak, or maybe it's just not appropriate for them. So they would suggest going on a cleanse that was nutrient rich, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those. So first I said is a water fast. Another type of cleanse that you can do is a juice cleanse. And what a juice cleanse, well, obviously, I hope you guys understand that a water fast is where the only thing that you're consuming is water, just to make that clear. Now, the next thing is a juice cleanse. And that means just the same thing, that the only thing that you're consuming is fresh juice. And I want to make that distinction very clear, fresh. It is not pasteurized. I know that in so many markets, you'll see where if you pick up the orange juice or even some green juices, and smoothie packages, it will say flash, prep, flash um, pasteurized. Pasteurized means that they cook it. And once they cook it, basically that destroys the antioxidants, it destroys the, the enzymes that are already in it, even more so than what juicing tends to all already do that a little bit. So it makes it a far inferior product that you're not getting the nutrition that you're wanting. So if you're going on a juice cleanse, what you're wanting to do is deliver maximum nutrient with the least amount of digestive pressure or digestive work and get the nutrient into the bloodstream within 15 minutes of the body. Because the saying goes is that if you're holding on to excess fat, and that is a main reason that people like to cleanse, is that you are fat and starving. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on this little rant for just a moment and explain what that means. It means that the body does not trust that you are going to provide it with the nutrient that it needs. So what it will do is it will hold on to fat as safekeeping and saying, I'm holding this hostage until you deliver the goods, until you give me the nutrient that I need. So oftentimes when you're doing a juice cleanse, you are flooding the body with high levels of nutrient with very little effort on the body and into the bloodstream. So the body goes, okay, I'm paying attention. And usually 
it starts to show up in about 72 hours. Give me one second. So it's about 72 hours and that the body starts to go, can I trust you? Can I, are you going to keep doing this? So you'll start to notice a shift in 72 hours. Some people notice it sooner, but usually it's about 72 hours that you'll start to notice something. So, oh, hey, welcome. Saw that you joined. Um, moving on to juice cleanses. So I hope that makes sense. And juice, to be very specific, because for whatever reason, I notice that people get confused between like juices and smoothies. Juice means that there is no fiber in the liquid. Like, if I blend food, fruit, vegetables, greens, whatever, in a blender, and it is thick and there's still the fiber, but it's just broken down, that's a, sm that's a smoothie. And, well, they say a smoothie has a banana in it, right? That's how it comes about. But let's, just for basic essence. And then juice has no fiber at all. It is completely liquid. There's no pulp. There's no fibers at all. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, <clears throat> so that is the next level of cleansing or type of cleanse you can do. And obviously that leads into the next where a juice cleanse is devoid of all fiber. The purpose of being that it doesn't require a digestive load on the system. And then we move into like smoothies, blended fruits and vegetables. That's the next type of cleanse that you can do. And the perk to that one is that one, it holds your appetite longer. Two, the fiber slows down the um, absorption and of uh, sugars into the bloodstream so it has a more stabilizing effect to blood sugar levels if you're sensitive to that. Um, it also acts like fiber is like the scrub brush to the digestive system. So if you've got layers of sludge lined up in your digestive system, then this the fiber acts as little scrubbers to clean it off. So it's a really fantastic and effective way to cleanse is just doing smoothies. It's even very common that you'll see people do a couple day, you know, three day green smoothie cleanse. That's something that is a nice little reset. And you can actually coordinate some of this stuff that I'm, I'm pointing like you can see this, but you, you can literally like take the water fast on the daily, right? Where it says, where I said, you know, 12 hours, 18 hours, if that's how long you go, if you're going on elimination or whatever, say that that's the appro approximate time. Maybe that's the time that you're doing your water fasting. And then the weekly 24 hour cleanse, maybe that's when you're doing a one day juice cleanse. And if you're gonna do a monthly, like I said, with the moon cycle, a three to four day cleanse, that might be a great time to do a green smoothie cleanse or a smoothie cleanse or something like that. So you can see how you can kind of switch it up, which is kind of cool, I think. I get excited when I talk about this, so I hope you're enjoying this as well. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you are. Who's listening still? I see that quite a few of you have joined, so thank you for being here. Um, let's see. Okay, so then the next type of cleanse that can go, and now if you may have noticed, these are actually changing in levels of intensity, water fasting being the most difficult, and they're getting a little bit easier. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Um, they're getting a little bit easier as they go. So we've got now moving on to another type of cleanse is a raw food cleanse. And that is, I, I personally think that this can be as simple or as complicated, hey guys, thanks, um, simple or as complicated as you want to make it. I personally find it a minimalist's dream to do a simple mono food, raw food cleanse. Now, is it exciting? No. Is it taste bud exciting? No, it's none of that. It's, but that's not the point and the purpose. As a matter of fact, that's the gift at the same time. When you can learn to appreciate food in its most natural state, without any alterations of spicing it up, seasoning it up, frying it, cooking it, baking it, who knows whatever method you want to do to it, this really gets you in tune with one, true hunger, two, eliminating cravings, because the moment that you can eat food in its most natural state without any alterations, 
is the moment that your body is starting to become fine-tuned. When we don't want to eat those foods in the most natural state, we're, we're not really operating out of hunger, we're operating out of habit, we're operating out of wanting some sort of, an, of a satisfaction of the senses through our food, rather than the purpose of food, which is to provide a nutrient and energy to the body. So let me explain what raw food uh, cleansing is. Raw food cleansing is food that has not been cooked in any way, shape, or form. And the reason that, they, that a raw food cleanse exists is because it is still intact with all of its antioxidants, all of its nutrients, and its enzymes. And that is something that is key. And I feel like this has so much to do with aging and the body. Because our body, we are born with a certain number of enzymes. Think of it like a, a, like a bank account number. Say that you, the number, let's just for arbitrary purposes, let's just say 10,000. And you use enzymes for all sorts of functions of the body to perform its duties. And so they constantly are going down. However, we are unnecessarily depleting those when we're eating heavy foods that are devoid of nutrient that requires a lot of enzymes in order to digest the food. That can actually age us, which blew my mind when I learned this. So I don't want to use my enzymes on, I mean, I'm going to have to use them anyways. Why burn them up any faster? Kind of like your bank account. You probably don't want to spend your money any faster than you have to. So it's that same thing that if you have that opportunity, why not? And here's amazing is that pure raw foods, they have the enzymes in it. So it's not taking away from your own enzymes to break it down. So it breaks itself down for you, which is fantastic. And again, because it hasn't been cooked or processed in any way, it's still rich in all of its antioxidants. So you're getting the maximum nutrition possible. So that is another type of cleanse. Now, that can still be a bit challenging for many and most people that are living today. That's just not a common practice that many people have. Now, I know I have some veterans on here that have been with me for some time, and they have done that. Maybe they even live a raw food lifestyle. And here's what's amazing. All of these things that I'm sharing with you, if, if this sounds like you, you probably don't even need a cleanse because the, the way that you eat and the way that your body responds goes and, and gets toxicity, goes hands in, hand in hand. Now, there are some other elements, and I'm going to go into that in a little bit, of other things that can create toxic burden to the body, but this is one massive way that we do three times a day. So that is that's a great way to make a big impact on your cleanliness and um, your, ne your necessity to cleanse. So again, a lot of these you may not even find that you're doing because you're actually just living a really clean lifestyle. The, so here's the last one that I'm going to share, um, and this is basically a plant-based diet. And that just means you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, but it's not exclusively raw. That there is some cooked food. And this is really great from somebody that's coming from a really highly processed diet. Um, they eat out a lot or lots of fast food and things like that. This will still be a highly effective cleanse for them. Because sometimes, and I'm not saying that you can't go into the other levels of cleansing or types of cleanses that I just explained, but sometimes a little bit more gentler approach works better for sustainability. So like I was saying even before, how daily it could be a water fast and weekly it can be a, a juice cleanse and then monthly it can be a raw food cleanse and then seasonally maybe you go plant-based if you're not already living that. So it still has cooked foods. That would be like you'd have baked carrots and beets and yams and potatoes or cooked um, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, things like that that are cooked, right? Um, and that you're going to get great results, but it's not as intense or difficult to transition to. So it's a bit more gentle. So because it is a bit more gentle than the other methods that I've already shared, Hey, sweetheart, thanks for joining. Um, because it's a little less difficult, 
you would expand the time that you do it. So if you're doing, say, the plant-based seasonally four times a year, which again, especially if you're doing, like I mentioned, all of the foods that are available to, in that season that are fresh, then you might want to expand that to a minimum of a week, maybe a seven-day thing, okay? And now you're going on to the semi-annually and the annually. And again, plant-based, I say, is where it's at. That's where I start saying anything other than that, we start adding more and more foods. It just starts to create more and more um, roadblocks that get in the way of cleansing. So if you're wanting to say speed up a cleanse and you're wanting to move forward and really accelerate it, you're going to move up those levels of cleansing. You're going to notice that. If you're wanting to slow down a cleanse, you're going to move down from water, juice, raw food, or plant-based. So you can really start to get in tune with your body and how it responds to these different forms of, or types of cleanses. So that is, to me, one of the most amazing things and empowering tools of information when it comes to creating my own cleanse. And ladies that have been with me for some time, I say this, you've already been down this road with me. So rather than me telling you all the steps, this is more of an opportunity to tune in to your own body and see how you're responding rather than doing what you're told to. Now in the beginning, if you're new to cleansing, you need to sometimes follow a guideline. Hey, thanks for joining. So you need to kind of follow a guideline until you start to get the hang of it. And that's what I do in the cleanses that I offer is I offer some hand holding to those of you who want to cleanse, but you might be experiencing things unnecessarily that are making it harder on yourself. And I get to help you kind of streamline that process. So one of the great things about cleansing in a group is one, you're not alone and you get the support and enthusiasm of everybody else. But two, I'm there to help you eliminate some of the roadblocks that are specific and unique to you. So you can ask all the questions that you need and I'm going to be there to help you with that process so that it's as effective as possible. Nothing's more frustrating than going through a cleanse, and I'm going to say this on myself because I've done it before, go through a cleanse and then just be totally set back and not understand why and what to do to get back onto track with it. I had, um, well, I'll tell you this story in a moment because there are, actually I just shared with you levels of cleanses. I'll share with you this story in a minute about a cleanse that just totally set me back. Actually, I'll, I'll address it now because it's super insightful. One of the things that I have heard over and over when it comes to cleansing, and if you Google this or look it up, it's called auto-intoxication or they'll call it a healing crisis. And I'm kind of, I have a different perspective on this based on all the years that I have been cleansing. So this is what I want to share with you. So many times when people are doing a cleanse, they will be told you're going to experience or could experience a healing crisis. And the symptoms and how you would even know that you are having a healing crisis is that you feel like you're getting sick. You don't feel right. Your energy drops low. Maybe you kind of feel like you got the cold or flu. Oh, hey, look at y'all. Nice. You feel like you got a cold or a flu. Um, you just feel not on your A game. And when you're doing a cleanse that is really effective and you're in tune with it, your energy is like sky high. And I've had so many people tell me that are addicted to caffeine that when they did a cleanse with me, they couldn't even imagine having any caffeine because their energy was so high and they were feeling so incredible. So that's something to be mindful of. If you're going through a cleanse and it is just knocking you down, two things. The cleanse that you're doing is too much, too soon, too fast. You may want to take it down a notch. And two, if you wanted to stay at that path, there's a way that you can stay on a cleanse, but alleviate the symptoms of auto-intoxication. So auto-intoxication or a healing crisis means that the toxins are being broken up from all of the tissues in your body, in the joints, in the gut, in the 
in the blood, in your tissues, it's all starting to break up and go into the bloodstream at a rate faster than it can be eliminated. So it's kind of like you've stirred up the pot. And this is the analogy that I give quite often, which is imagine if there was like a muddy floor. And what you did is you took a, a bucket with a scrub brush and you bucket of water and a scrub brush and you started to scrub the floor and all of the mud starts to come off, right? And it builds it up, but then you don't go and you don't wipe it away. And then you walk away and you let that dirt resettle back onto the floor. That to me is what's happening in, our, in an auto intoxication or a healing crisis. The toxins are not getting out of the body fast enough. And that is what creates the feeling sick, feeling like you got the flu, feeling under the weather, feeling down and low. So you don't have to experience that when you do a cleanse. If, as a matter of fact, if you do experience that, hit me up. I will help you get right back on track because that is, that is something that you don't need to be that aggressive with your body. And you also can alleviate those signs and those symptoms so that you can get a really effective cleanse. Because what is the point? If you're going through all of this effort and work to clean up your body and get these toxins out, how frustrating that you just stirred them up a bit and then they resettled back into the tissues and, and the organs of the body. Yikes. And yet, that happens so many times with cleansing. And this is why I love doing the stuff that I'm doing and sharing with this because you don't, it doesn't need to be that way. So let's move on. And what exactly are, um, what are specific aspects that you can do on a cleanse? Now I say in general, no matter what cleanse that you're doing, you always want to start with a colon and a liver cleanse, period. And here's the thing is you can actually Google right now or after this, this video, you know, signs of colon toxicity, um, maybe mucoid plaque. Um, maybe you can Google symptoms of parasite infections. And this is what's amazing. I think over 97% of the population has parasites, especially if you're eating um, not a plant-based diet. But even still, you can get exposed to parasites through your fingers, touching things in your mouth. You can get them. And what's amazing is that they literally send off signs and signals to your body making you crave particular things that will sustain and make it thrive, which is not the healthy food. So if you notice that you're having cravings, and again, this is just maybe one of the signs of a parasite infection, a paras uh, infestation, but please go look up um, parasite quizzes to see if you need it. But I genu generally would say for most people, one to two times a year, parasite claims might be really powerful and good for you to do um, in conjunction to all these other things that I am sharing with you today. Um, again, and here's what's interesting is if you go and you read the signs and the symptoms of what um, paras if you have parasites, there is always a best friend that seems to come along with parasites. And if you're not, if you're not new to cleansing, you'll hear this word all the time, but if you're new, this is going to be a new word for you. It's candida. So if you have never heard this, basically candida is, it gets a really bad rap, to be honest. It does serve a purpose in the body and it's supposed to be there, but it's supposed to be in our body in the appropriate ratio. So think of probiotics as good bacteria and candida as the bad bacteria. And it's normally a ratio of like an 80 to 20, mostly good bacteria, a little bit of this stuff is going on, okay? But what happens is through lifestyle, and again, you can go and Google, there are hundreds of candida cleanse quizzes that you can look up that will help you identify if you are experiencing the symptoms of having um, an overgrowth of candida, which is, again, just like I said, 97% of the population has parasites. Same when it comes to candida. 
Mo I mean, we all have candida in our body. I don't think there's one person on the planet that doesn't have it, but it's the ratios that's more important. And there are certain things and lifestyle choices that make us more prone to the overgrowth of that. Think of it as if you've ever had a fish aquarium and the green little funk that starts to grow inside of the tank and it starts to take over, that's kind of what candida can do on the inside of the body. It can, it can get an overgrowth of it. So check that out. If that's something that you'd like to understand a little bit more, is um, that's something that people will do. It's very common. They do a colon cleanse, they do a liver cleanse, and, and something super specific is you're never gonna want to do any of the other cleanses that I am mentioning in the absence of a colon cleanse or liver cleanse because those two are the things that are breaking everything down, making sure that it's metabolized and evacuated from the body. So if those are not in every single cleanse possible, it can be a nightmare and you can do more harm than good. And that's why I say I've seen some dangerous cleanses. Sometimes I'll see people talking about the cleanse that they're doing and then I read their symptoms and it's not a surprise to me why that's happening to them and what, and, it, and it breaks my heart. And again, that's why, the, why I do what I do. I share this information. If I can be of support to help people actually understand what the pro cleansing process looks and feels like, then I'm thrilled to be able to do that because it's just a lot of unnecessary wasted time. You want to be effective. Everybody's so busy. You don't want to waste your time setting yourself back. The point is to move forward. Oftentimes, a cleanse will propel your health to the next level. It's just a fine tune, and the last thing you want is to feel like it took you back a step. It's totally depressing and totally deflating, and I don't want anybody to experience that. So, moving on, the other things that you will find a lot of people will do on a, um, in a cleanse is they might do a heavy metal cleanse. You know, there's amalgam fillings that people have in their mouths or uh, mercury fillings, and they can leach metals or maybe they're eating a diet that actually has a lot of heavy metals. I've even seen that even some produce can be high in heavy metals based on the land that it was produced in, which is pretty wild. But there are things that you can do to alleviate the heavy metals. I think they even say certain seafood, uh, seafoods are very high in heavy metals. So, and that can start to wreak havoc. So again, if you don't know, you can actually go look up Google heavy metal signs of a heavy metal toxicity and see if that sounds like you. I'm not telling you to go and do that, um, do a, a heavy metal cleanse or anything like that, but you may find it insightful to learn about some of these things before you start doing a cleanse. Um, other cleanses that you'll see is a, a kidney, bladder, urinary tract cleanse. This is fantastic for people that are prone to urinary tract infections. There's just a weakness that goes there. Um, and here's what's really fascinating. Actually, I get so excited sometimes talking about this. But this is something that I learned about the bladder that blows my mind. So the bladder is like a big balloon, right, that expands and contracts. But when we eat sugar that it basically sits in the lining of the um, of the bladder and it creates like these ridges and little crusty wrinkles. Think of it like when uh, a piece of rubber or a rubber band sits out in the sun and it gets those cracks and when you try to expand it, it just snaps. Well, our bladder gets like all these little wrinkles as it, it's not properly cared for. Of course, dehydration is the number one. But then all of the urine can sit in the wrinkles in the bottom of the bladder and create problems. So you don't want that to happen to your bladder. You want a, a supple, expanding and contracting bladder that that is not getting crust all lined up on the inside and having urine sit in the bottoms of that. That's just not, I mean, gosh, that's like a car sitting in, in, a, in a lake halfway. I mean, it's going to wreak havoc on that car. So you don't want to do that. So some people will do a, a urinary kidney, urinary tract kidney bladder cleanse. Um, and with liver, again, gallbladder will often go together. So 
those are some of the specific things that people do to cleanse. And then there's, of course, restorative things that people can do. They can do an adrenal um, and thyroid um, restorative process. So you just start looking at the, the, the organs in the body and you start realizing that there's a lot you can do. Each specific organ has its own weaknesses and strengths and it has its own nutritional requirements. So it's a really great way to tune in. Now, moving on from the specifics of the cleanse, how to prepare for a cleanse. And um, this is, again, so important. How you enter a cleanse and how you exit a cleanse is often underestimated, often overlooked, and out of eagerness, we jump into a cleanse without priming the body and out of discouragement we jump out of a cleanse or cravings we jump out of a cleanse with something really off but there is a wisdom to going in a very nice system that gradually acclimates the body think of it like just as the sun goes up it generally gently warms up the temperature and it gently goes down it's not like instantaneous, hot and then cold. So a lot of times people get eager or they just don't even know that there's a wisdom to gently warming up and gently cooling off to a cleanse. So you can prime the body. And what the purpose of, of doing that is, is it really reduces the toxicity and the transition, the cravings. So if I'm talking about that auto intoxication, this is not going to be an element. If you are acclimating your body appropriately, you're not going to experience as much of a healing crisis or auto intoxication. Auto intoxication. You're also not going to notice, you're going to let the, the process happen gradually with the cravings and things like that. So you can actually build it up and then come back down in intensity on the cleanse. And that's ideal. You never want to be abrupt and coming in and going off of a cleanse. So let me share with you some basic things that you would want to do to prepare for a cleanse. Now I talked about it lightly in the last video and I call it a six doctors challenge. And if you have not done this challenge, I highly suggest that you do. And I will put the information here in this group about the more specific things about the six doctors. And what I shared last week and I'll share again this time is sometimes we do we jump into cleansing or other health activities and we miss the basic elements of health. And these six doctors are full and complete rest. And, and here, okay, actually I'm going to rewind because I like to put this into perspective of order of sustaining life and the importance of each one of these things. And I know we only have about six minutes left, so I'll do my best to get this out. Um, so if I think about sunshine, obviously no life would exist without sunshine. So we'll say doctor number one is sun, sun exposure. It literally is like cleansing of even parasites that are on the outside of our skin. As a matter of fact, the number one epidemic that the, that the world is facing nutritionally is a vitamin D deficiency. And that is causing rickets and soft bones. And oftentimes they're talking about osteoporosis, well, bone density and vitamin D and sun exposure go hand in hand. I don't know why that's not being talked about more. So sun exposure is so important to the strength and the integrity of our body. It's unbelievable. And not only just all the disinfecting things that a sun can do, and we actually even absorb through our eyes. And if you wear contacts or uh, sun sunglasses, this will also affect, but the eyes actually take in and, assim and assimilate nutrient to a small degree. Photosynthesis, they, the body can convert some sunlight, like again, vitamin D, to nutrition in the body. So it's pretty fantastic. So I say that is your number one doctor, and it doesn't take a lot of sun exposure to do that. I'll put the more specifics in there um, about that in the guide. So I want you to challenge yourselves to this before you start a cleanse. If you are joining me for a cleanse, I'd love you to go through the Six Doctors Challenge because that is a fantastic way to prime your body for a cleanse. That way it's a smooth sail and things are just moving right along. 
It's the second doctor that I want to talk about in order of sustaining life is oxygen. How long could you live without oxygen? Minutes? That tells you how absolutely important it is to have air, oxygen. You would you die within minutes of not having it. So here's what's amazing is smoking, whoa, vaping is a huge thing too nowadays. There's a lot of vaping. That is going to set you back and make you more toxic. Obviously, if you live in a place where the air quality is really poor and you don't have air filtration or a lot of nature and plants around you, you're going to probably suffer. And that oxygen even affects the coherence of your mental capacity, your ability to focus. So, and, and even super interesting is I believe that deep breathing, full capacity of the lungs, and I can't tell you how long, so you might want to do your research and, and look this up on me and verify it for me, is you can convert a certain amount of oxygen into amino acids in the body, which is mind-blowing, blows my mind. So literally protein can be created through oxygen-rich breathing. So please, if you're thinking about doing a cleanse, let's get some of these basics under your belt first and, and, and move forward or use this time of the cleanse to get air filtration, get plants, get whatever you need to get pure, clean air into your life or open up the windows to your house or get outside more, those kinds of things. Uh, the third doctor in order of life sustainability is, let's see, I said sun, I said water, I mean air, is water. Water you can live without, what, days? So obviously it's not as impactful as oxygen, as air, but it's more impactful than, say, food, which you can go months depending on how much body fat you have on your body. So, but water is the next order of importance when it comes to cleansing and priming your body for a cleanse. So hydration, hydration, hydration. The statement goes, dilution is the solution to the pollution. And I heard that, I'm trying forgetting the name, and some of you here that have been with me for some time, you know who said that. It's such an amazing statement it literally is what's cleaning your body from the inside out so proper hydration so key and again all these specifics are going to be in the six doctors guide and the six doctors challenge for you guys to go ahead and check out so don't worry about that um, if you are not seeing if you're watching this video and you don't have that then please send me a message i'll be able to hook you up and get you that information um, then we go on and actually i'm going to put this fifth doctor or this fourth doctor over with air because it's exercise and as I said in the video last week, disease cannot grow in oxygen-rich blood. So if you're wanting to cleanse your body, what better way to cleanse than through rigorous exercise? And that means cardio. It gets your blood pumping and it starts to squeeze and work out all of the gunk out of your tissues in your body. And then I love this. So not only is cardio amazing, but so, or anything that gets you out of breath, but yin yoga or flexibility training because toxicity can encroach on the joints and in the deep tissues of the body. And flexibility training or yin yoga or something like that really opens up those stagnant areas that start to infringe on our range of motion, our ability to open up freely. And that starts to kind of decompose or disintegrate our body. So I would say that those two elements of fitness are phenomenal when it comes to a cleanse because when you're flexibility training, you are opening those things up so that blood can get in because oftentimes blood flow can't get in there anymore. So those are things to be thinking about to prime your body for a cleanse and to do on a cleanse. The next thing is the fifth doctor is what, what this way? sun. I didn't say rest yet, did I? <laughs> Sun, fresh air, water, and um, food. Food is the next one. You can live month, like, yes, you actually can. I've seen people go months without eating food. It's wild. I mean, they become emaciated. I'm not saying it's super healthy, but depending on your body fat, you can go months without food. The body can live that long, sometimes weeks, if you have low body fat. But that is something that you'd want to get 
as much nutrient density food into your body as possible to prime for a cleanse. And again, if you are not used to eating produce, I would say gradually acclimate. If you only eat one cup of produce a day, each day add one more cup until you've built it up. The next thing is rest. And that is, again, I should have put that actually earlier, but I didn't, is that the body cannot cleanse it if it's not resting. So if you're wanting to prepare for a cleanse, rest must be present. So those are the things that I'd love to challenge you to do. Check out the guide for the Six Doctors Challenge. Participate in that with me and start priming the body and preparing it for a cleanse. If you love this information that I'm sharing with you tonight and you have already done, you know that you need a cleanse and this information has been insightful for you and you are ready to cleanse, I am inviting you to participate with me on a cleanse. I do it for myself and I'm just extending the invitation out to you. If you want more information, you want to participate with this, you will get free coaching, not free coaching because it is a paid service. Um, you will get coaching from me. You'll get all of the PDFs, the videos and the materials in order to successfully go through a cleanse and obviously you'll be doing it with a group of other people. So if that is something that interests you, please send me a private message with your email address and I will get you that information. I would be honored to help you through this process, getting back on track with your health. I love doing it. I know that it works. I feel that I transcend so many of the limitations of people that are now in their 40s with adult children. I don't have those same restrictions and ailments that people half my age are experiencing. And I do give it as a testament to the lifestyle that I live. And obviously cleansing is a huge portion of that. So I know it works and I know that it can absolutely transform your health and it would be an honor to take you through that process. If you have any questions about this video or anything else that I've shared, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to answer them. And with that said, my cleanse is starting next week, which is next Wednesday, August 8th. I'd love to have you with me. If you haven't let me know, then maybe there's another time. I think I'm going to be offering this cleanse again on a more regular basis. But right now, I know that I offer it once a year. But let's see where we're at in another time. So if it's not appropriate for you, please take advantage of all the information I've shared with you in this video. Share it with anybody that you know that may need it. And... Support one another. Wishing you guys great health. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, for being here. And um, thank you. That's all I have to say. Till next time.